Okay, so here we have yet another trigonometric equation. At this time, we see that the input of our trig ratios are indeed not a simple trigonometric uh, or a simple uh, variable, but it's again uh, an expression. And this expression, I hope, is, is actually quite familiar to us. We can see that this is 270 plus alpha, and we can use co ratios to change this to simplify that. And same here, we can use the co-ratios to simplify that. So we are going to use our pus, cus, and dust steps. Okay, positive, acute, and simple, making our angles positive, acute, and simple. Secondly, changing everything into cos and sine. Um, so that, and thirdly, we're going to get a single trig ratio equal to a constant. Okay, that's the aim of a trigonometric equation. So first let's change into positive, acute, and simple. We see 207, uh, well to do that we need our uh, cast diagram, C-A-S-T, there's our cast diagram. Okay, knowing that this is 0, 90, 180, uh, 270, then negative 90, negative 180, and negative 270, 360 or negative 360 and uh, then uh, we see 270 plus so 270 is positive so we're going in the positive direction 270 plus would be in the fourth quadrant where cos is indeed positive so this would be positive however we are making an angle with the y-axis which is not allowed we must make um, an axis with or a triangle with our x-axis and to do that, we change cos into sine. So this becomes negative 78 sine of alpha. Okay, minus 93. And on the right-hand side, we've got negative 36. Negative 36. How about negative 180 minus alpha? Okay, so there we have negative 180s all the way there. Okay, minus is a little bit more, so negative 180 in the uh, clockwise direction, and we see we're falling in the second quadrant where sine is positive, so this sine is not going to change, it's going to stay a positive. Okay, so this stays positive 44, and uh, I'm still making 180 is a y-axis, sorry, an x-axis, so we're going to keep it sine, and that's going to change to alpha. Okay, and now we see we have two trig ratios on either side. This side we've got negative 78 of them. On that side we've got positive 44. So if we subtract the 44 signs we have on the right hand side, also on the left hand side, okay, as we do in equations, then we have negative 78 minus 44 sine alpha. Okay, on the left hand side, on the right hand side we have negative 36, but the positive, the negative 93 gets added on both sides to solve the constants on the right hand side. Uh, so plus 93 gives us what 93 minus 36 gives me for, uh, 87 minus 30, 57 gives me 57. And then the coefficient in front of the sign, negative 78 minus 44 gives me 82 minus another, so 122. So 100, negative 122 is the coefficient. I divided on the other side, negative 122. There we go. And now I've got my trig ratio equal to a constant. Okay, quite a bit of work to get to there. Okay, as you can see with the cos and sine step, we didn't have to do that. I, I forgot to mention that. But um, now, uh, after that, we went to get our trig ratio equal to a constant. That's what we have here. And then we can do our reference angle using a calculator. Okay, and to do that, we take 57 divided by 122. Negative 0 0.467. Okay, blah, blah, blah. That's not important. We want the inverse sine of that gives us negative 27.85 negative 27,85 degrees that's my reference angle I'm supposed to find the general solution for this equation uh, which means it's 2 there's your general solution ok 
okay, where we simply have alpha equal, and we use, just use alpha because there's just an alpha inside there. Alpha is equal to the reference angle, negative 27,85 plus 360 times k. That's the one. And the other one is where we say 180 degrees minus the reference angle. So negative negative makes it plus minus minus 27 becomes positive 27 comma 85 plus 360 times k and then when we solve that that gives me 207 comma 85 plus 360 times k that is my general solution where k is an element of integers